The next plant on your list, number six, Nandina domestica. This is a great illustration of how different a particular cultivar can look from the species type. So when you're dealing with the species type of heavenly bamboo, they're upwards of seven or eight feet tall, and they have very few branches. They're very cane-like in their growth, and uh, they have very distant internodes, okay? And which is all, it, it gives a really good uh, feel if you're developing a Japanese garden or a shade garden. Uh, it, it, it evokes a certain feel. However, in, in modern day, we want our cultivars to be much more compact. Modern landscapes are much smaller than they used to. So if you've got your quarter acre, you can't really afford to take up lots and lots of space with large plants, okay? So I'm not sure which cultivar this is, if it's uh, Firepower or Gulfstream. There are a lot of modern cultivars of Nandina domestica that are out there. But they do share a few traits. One is they are uh, bipinnately compound, at least bipinnately. So pinnately compound means that you have a central axis and leaflets are born off either side. In this case, bipinnate compound means that it's at least twice branched. So you have a central axis that goes up and then another axis that goes laterally. And then these are actually leaflets, okay? So this is not a leaf, okay? This is all a leaf, okay? So it's important to know the difference. One of the reasons why it's important to know the difference when you're dealing with woody plants is because woody plants will not root from a leaf cutting, okay? So if you take this and you try to propagate it to develop a, uh, a you know, use asexual propagation through stem cuttings, it will not root. You have to use an actual stem cutting in woody plants in order to get them to root and to propagate, okay? So it's important to know what's a leaf and what's a branch. One thing you will note from, from all of these uh, plants, they are quite striking in their uh, color, so they have really nice dramatic new growth, and in this particular cultivar, it actually holds it for a good bit uh, of the summertime. One thing I will uh, point out here, oftentimes in these very dwarf cultivars, you, you, you rarely see flowers. And I think when I teach this, you know, and I bring students uh, walking over here, I probably point to these plants and say, well, you'll never see these flower. Well, Beware if a professor ever says always or never, because when you're dealing with biological systems, there are very few always or never. Okay, so the fact that these rarely flower does not mean they never flower, and in fact, here's a flower right here. The species type of Nandina domestica has a really large panicle of white flowers that are born in spring and red fruit that are produced later. It's important to note that in some parts of the United States, particularly in southern, mid to southern Florida, Nandina domestica is actually uh, quite weedy, bordering on invasive. And as such, I would recommend that you only plant these uh, uh, sterile or nearly sterile dwarf cultivars. There's also a lot of breeding work at the University of Florida by uh, Zanao Dang and his colleagues uh, to develop sterile ones. That's Nandina domestica. Again, I, uh, you rarely see the species type in cultivation anymore. You're mostly gonna see these dwarf cultivars, so that's why we're taking a look at these.